Going into high school, I was introduced to the idea of note-taking. I was excited by the idea of filling up those fresh notebooks, and it didn't take long for me to use them up since I would constantly rip out pages because of the smallest mistakes, holding myself to the same standard as the pictures I saw on Instagram. This was around the same time I was introduced to the Studygram community, and seeing all the pretty notes, it gave me something else to work towards, to have quote-unquote aesthetic notes of my own. The most time-consuming process was actually note-taking and not the revision. To be completely honest, I'd glance over my notes in around 30 minutes and call it studying for a test. Most of the learning I did was in the encoding of the information, and not really through retrieval. Writing notes for the subject the night before the test would take up the majority of my time studying. Now that we're in university, I think we both have a preference for notes that are more functional than something the studygram community viewed as pretty. Still in awe of all the colorful and pretty looking notes, but just not something that I'd do myself anymore. Over the last semester in university, I haven't actually taken any physical notes for any of my classes, and have created some quasi-notes for some classes, but the only class I've taken full on notes for a notion was for cell bio. My cell bio notes were organized with a table with one cell containing a page for each unit, with related files in the column beside it. Having my notes on Notion allowed me to view it on any of my devices, so I could review wherever I was, in the kitchen, in the bathroom, wherever. I know this sounds like an ad, but unfortunately this video isn't sponsored by Notion. As for the other two classes I mentioned, chemistry and psychology, I used Anki not as a way to review flashcards, but as a notes database where I would create a flashcard for each major topic or important point, as though I was going to use it as an actual flashcard for revision, but I didn't. The process of creating each flashcard was essentially deep level processing or encoding. By trying to explain the concept to myself without looking at the course material, and then writing out a closed deleted card in my own words in as condensed of a form as possible, I was identifying the key components, actively retrieving information from memory, and applying the knowledge by synthesizing my own individualized flashcard. Although I think this greatly reduced the amount of time I had to study and increased the retention of information, the information I'd encoded into memory was rehearsed and retrieved not by rereading, but from the regular repeated quizzes and testing from our courses. This was most apparent for psychology, where we had effectively two quizzes or chances at recall per week, which definitely helped solidify the concepts we were learning. It's not surprising, according to Dunlosky's 2013 study with the findings that practice testing is the most effective learning strategy. Citations in description. With rereading notes coming in as the sixth most effective method, only slightly more effective than highlighting and underlining, which has negligible effectiveness. For cell bio though, I didn't heed the psychology advice and just reread my notes. And as for me, I suppose I had notes for most of the classes I took, like biology, chemistry, and psychology, but it wasn't anything fancy, just typed up in Google Docs. Personally, I really valued the process of note-taking, as that was primarily what allowed me to understand most of the course content. I would listen to a lecture or read the textbook and attempt to reword the information in the most clear way for myself. If you're interested in checking out how I take notes, the video will be linked below. Now, even though I learned in psychology that rereading your notes is among one of the least effective ways to retain information long term, because you end up overestimating how much you know, as material simply seems familiar to you due to repeated exposure, also known as the feeling of fluency. Nonetheless, that's still how I studied for most of my exams and only decided to make flashcards the night before for the more confusing concepts. Any talk about digital note-taking inevitably leads to the issue of digital versus physical note-taking and their effectiveness and pros and cons. Let's start by tackling the lens of cost and supplies with the subject of pretty notes in mind. At first, buying a single Tombow brush pen doesn't seem to be very expensive, like what else can you get for $4 these days? But it adds up if you want the entire set, which comes out to be around $200. But now you need a nice dotted notebook like the Leuchtturm 1917. That's an additional 25 USD. But wait, now you'd still need pens, mild liners, white out, washi tape. Anyways, you get the point, it's a lot of money. And it's not hard for it to add up to the cost of the base model iPad Air, which is priced around $600, which isn't exactly affordable for many students who may not have jobs. But to take notes digitally and have the same advantages of portability, accessibility, and saving cost, you don't necessarily need an iPad to do so. To keep up with the handwritten aspect, there are many cheaper tablets, or if you already have a touchscreen laptop for other schoolwork. And if you want to take notes long term, apps like GoodNotes and Notability are one time purchase products priced around $8, just a third of the price of a Leuchtturm 1917. 
and it's completely customizable in paper size, type, and color. There are a number of free apps that work just as well, but these are just some we have experience with. And if you're not adamant about handwritten notes, there are plenty of free options like Notion, Google Docs, Microsoft OneNote, Apple Notes, and Pages, which you can look into. Speed is also something to consider when thinking about note-taking. In a study by Graham et al., the handwriting speed for verbatim transcription of grade nines, what I think is a good representation of a high school student's writing speed, had an average handwriting speed of 24 words per minute. Another thing to keep in mind is that as writing speed increases, legibility and accuracy decreases significantly for handwriting. With typing on a computer, legibility is not an issue, and speed is increased. In fact, the more you get used to typing, the faster you'll get and the average typing speed according to Ratatype is 41 words per minute, significantly higher than 24 words per minute with the handwriting. Correcting mistakes is also much easier digitally. Whether you're writing by hand on a tablet or typing out your notes, using the undo button, selection tool, or eraser is much quicker and cleaner than using whiteout or an eraser in real life. Moving things around, reordering paragraphs is as easy as selecting, copying, and pasting, something that's not so easy on paper. Color coding, when done right, is an effective way to organize and highlight information that needs to be learned. However, a lot of the times this can be counterproductive. Don't overcomplicate your notes by introducing too many colors and limit the amount of information you highlight because if everything is highlighted or colored, nothing will stand out as important and the key information gets lost. The elephant in the room when it comes to digital note-taking is its effectiveness when compared to physical note-taking, how well you're able to retain and recall the information. A lot of people tend to cite the Mueller and Oppenheimer study, which talks about physical note-taking leading to better performance than digital note-taking, but that's not exactly what the study says. To be specific, physical note-takers performed better on conceptual tasks than the digital note-takers in the study, but both groups performed equally well when questioned about factual information. The explanation given was that the note-takers who used laptops tended to transcribe the information verbatim, leading to shallow level processing. This seems to be the crux of this difference in conceptual understanding that puts digital note-taking behind physical note-taking effectiveness. However, by addressing this issue, that difference can be set aside. To mitigate the shallow level processing that comes with copying verbatim, aside from writing things out in your own words, creating question-answer formats can make taking notes a more active process. There might not always be enough time in class to make pretty and aesthetic notes, so there's a tendency to take rough notes in class and rewrite them later. In general, rewriting your notes can help fill in gaps in knowledge and reinforce the content, while providing the opportunity to improve the structure and organization of the notes, making it easier to revisit. But depending on how it's done, it can be extremely time consuming, and often not effective if done by simply copying the information. Pretty notes. Well, there's nothing inherently wrong with them. It's more of the fact that it's easy to get caught up in the aesthetics and gloss over their actual effectiveness. Digital notes can be made just as effectively and even more efficiently than physical notes, but the same level of conscious effort needs to be made in order to reap the benefits. 